Hey guys, this is Chris, Tabletop Sports Delaware, and I thought I would share with you something I got in the mail today. Um, won this on Rob's channel um, with his 100-yard uh, dash, 100 dash, where everybody bought $5 chances to uh, win half of the proceedings, and I just... I didn't need the money, but some games are being offered, and I won, so I took the games. And I've got some other things on the way, but the first thing to show up is from Bleacher Bums Gaming, Glory Days Boxing. So I have, I got it this afternoon, I've played it a couple of times, I've got a really good grasp on the rules, we're going to do a tutorial. It's easy to, the pieces are beautiful, mini review here, uh, the cards are awesome, um, it's easy to learn. Uh, the pace goes along really well. I really enjoy this game, so I mean, it, it would be well worth the purchase. I really encourage you to get it. It is a fantastic game. A lot of thought and effort went into it. Uh, the components are fantastic. Great box. Um, I mean, book size, maybe what, 9 by 11 and a half or so, like a pizza box and everything, but it really, it's fantastic. And this is big enough to hold all the weight classes that are out so far. Lightweight, medium weight, uh, heavyweight, welterweight. And there's a lot of choices for each of those weight classes. So uh, without any further ado, let's get into the box. This is what you're going to find when you get it. We have the rule book. And um, the rule book is good. It takes some getting used to the game, but once you figure out how things work, and then you learn where the stuff is in here. I mean, it, it's really good. It's laid out very well. There are a lot of good examples that walk you through it. So we have the rule book. We have uh, the master game board. This is where you'll keep track of punches landed, momentum, up here uh, you'll have one boxer in the red corner one in the blue corner and you'll see why they're red and blue in a minute uh, you'll have a timer and it's each round is broken up into nine 20 second long segments and something happens during each of those segments a uh, way to see how the judges scored um, stoppage of time uh, cut and swelling chart and a foul chart so everything is right here on that uh, you've got your event chart and your rare event chart. And these are a percentile roll, 0 to 100, or 0 to 99, I should say. Uh, you've got a sample score sheet, uh, which can be downloaded from, as you can see at the top of the screen, sidelinesportsgames.com. Um, again, this is from Bleacher Bums Gaming, Anthony Crooks, one of our uh, community members. Definitely check out his channel. Check out the game. It's great. Uh, scam sample score sheet. Um, you have referees and judges that you can choose from and also see how they're going to affect the bout. Um, you have a quick play chart. So that way if you want to run like an undercard leading up to the main event, you can kind of blast through it right here. Um, comparable to something that uh, Digging Deep Sports, Robert Lennon, uh, the now defunct Digging Deep boxing similar kind of what he did but uh it is different it's a little more involved i really 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 do like it should have checked focus before i started this thing there we go uh pen does not come with it that's my pen i likes it get off it you can't have it uh, and then i drop a piece of paper or two and i don't have my grabbers that's okay Part of the spice of life. It comes with dice and markers. You're going to see you have uh, two D6, a red and a blue. That represents the boxers. Uh, you have a percentile. It comes with a black and a white D10. Uh, recommends to use the black as the tens. Me having the dice box of holding, I just went ahead and grabbed a black percentile. Um, you can do that however you like. It comes with a D20 and it comes with three markers, green, three pawns, green, red, and blue. So it comes with components, good components. So I mean, you know, that they are functional, but they are more than fantastic. And look at these cards. And this is one of the ones that I fought with earlier. 
Um, Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray. These are good cards, and as you can see by the size, I mean, they're pretty big. So they're going to be easy to read. It, they're just fantastic. They really are. I'm very impressed with the components in this thing. So I'll tell you what, we'll keep those out because I'm kind of used to them because I ran that fight earlier. By the way, Sugar Ray, beast. Like, uh, you needed to know that. But that's the welterweights, and you can see how many there are. There's lots of them. And we've got uh, heavyweights, medium weights, middle weights, and lightweights. Lots of boxers to choose from with each weight class. That is Glory Days Boxing. But we are going to go through the components, go through how to play the game, so that way you guys can see what is done, how it is done, why it is done, where it is done, who it is done, when it is done. All of them duns. So let us go ahead. Let's set that right, eh, right over here for now. That'd be fine. Let's get the cards out. Yeah, let us get down here on the cards a little better so we can see exactly what we're looking at. Get a really good look at these cards. They are fantastic looking cards. They are. I love these components. They are great. They really are. Focus. Darn you, focus. So these are the boxer's cards. Um, that you will get and you will see varying bits of information all over it Let I get the instruction book so that way I can use the proper terms um, Different parts of the cards that you're going to find um, Right here underneath well you got the boxers name in their class uh, how many bouts wins loss um, draws and knockouts uh, for each card um, here you're going to have, they call, um, Anthony calls it ring generalship, but basically it's a ring general check. And every segment of each round is going to start with a ring general check. It's a general check to see who's going to be on the offensive and whether it's going to be outside or inside, um, outside or inside attack. Um, here you are going to have your... Da, 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 da. Let's get the next page because that actually says what it is. Yeah, that was uh, Ring General Ratings right here. Next are your offensive actions. Um, you are going to roll, a, roll the percentile, and it will tell you whether you're inside or outside um, if you are going to get um, five punches landed, four punches landed, three punches landed, two punches landed, Miss checks an opponent gets to have a counter swing. Uh, the boxers clinch up, no punches landed in the segment. Uh, whether there's a foul and check the event chart. And it is going to, it gives a little flavor uh, for Oscar de la Hoya. Hard cross caps the sequence, four punches, uh, four punches landed. So you would be rolling your percentile roll here, your 2d10. Uh, next we have uh, defensive adjustments. So, when you need to make a defense roll, or if you get the opportunity to make a counter roll, you're going to roll your d20, and if it falls in these ranges, you'll make these adjustments to it. I'll show you how to do this in a bit. Next, you have fouls. Uh, what kind of foul can be called on the boxer, and this is going to be a d20 roll, so what kind of frequency they're going to have that kind of foul. Uh, next, you are going to have your fighter ratings, which are right here. Power, Chin KD, Chin KO, Will, or Willpower, uh, Cut, and Foul. And we'll go over those in further detail in just a bit. Um, I think we will. Yeah, okay. Uh, then you have your um, traits, fighter traits. You see here with uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Old Master. Uh, you subtract one from your opponent's punches landed in all toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges. And we'll explain what kinds of exchanges there can be. 
And then you also have your cut and swelling area. If you get cut anytime a boxer rolls a 19 or a 20 on their offensive roll, um, it's an, a chance for their opponent, the one who is on the receiving end of the dish, to have swell, cut, gash, bloody nose, and um, it, that's a d20 roll as well. But these are the cards. The cards are laid out well, they're colored, they're beautiful, the PDF. Uh, this is also available in a PDF version. Fortunately, I was able to get these printed cards, and man, they are so beautiful. They really are. So that is the cards. Um, let's go over what those fighter ratings are while we're at it. Okay. Um, you have ring generalship, um, which is the ability to dictate the pace and offense output of a fight when fighting on both the inside and outside. So let's say um, we are going to get out the dice. And to start every single segment, which is one of those nine 20 second segments of each round, you're going to roll 2d6, the red and the white. And you're going to put them just like that. The boxer in the red corner, which would be Oscar de la Hoya for this example, has rolled a 1. That means he's making an attack from the outside. Sugar Ray Leonard has rolled a 1. He's in the blue corner, and he's making an attack from the inside. Well, this has one star. This has two stars. The one with the most stars is the one who is making the attack. The one who is going on the offensive. So if we were to roll a three and a two, uh, that would be Oscar de la Hoya, his three, boxer in the red corner. Uh, inside, there are no stars. Sugar Ray Leonard, blue two, he's in the blue corner. Uh, outside, three stars, which is killer. He mopped the floor with De La Hoya earlier with that, too. He just, he was unbeatable. He kept on popping up. So that is what the ring generalship is. It is to see whether the attack is coming from the inside or the outside portion, uh, the percentile rolls for the boxer's card, and then also to determine who goes on the offensive with the most stars. Uh, next we have power. We're going to go over these ratings right here. Power is the ability to knock an opponent down or out. Checked against 1d20 for each offensive roll. So, if in this instance we have determined that Sugar Ray Leonard with his blue 2, it's an attack on the outside, he is going to roll... Uh, the two D10s. I like rolling the two D10s and also the D20. Just to have it done. So he has rolled a 1 and a 4 to be read as 14. And he has rolled a 7. Okay? So, first of all, you're going to look at the 7. Um, power. Ability to knock an opponent down or out. Checked against 1D20 for each offensive roll. The first number indicates the fighter's normal power rating. The second is the power rating if the opponent is hurt, if they've taken an injury, or if they've been knocked down or stunned. Uh, the first column for all these numbers is always normal. The second column is once this boxer has become fatigued, which means his uh, stamina points have dropped to zero. Cover that later. So in this instance, you look at the seven, it has to be equal to or less than these numbers. So he does not have a power punch. It's not that killer instinct. So it's not happening here. So then you just go to the 14. Now we know blue 2 outside 14 is right here. And it says dances in and out, firing away. Four um, punches landed. Um, so that is basically how you do that. We'll go over it in more detail, but that's what the power is. You're checking to see if it's equal to or less than this rating, and if it is, then your opponent will have to make a chin um, knockdown check, a chin check. And basically what a chin check is, is the, uh, is the ability to avoid being knocked down or stunned if an opponent scores a potential knockdown. A potential knockdown would have been 
three because that would have been five or less. So let's say we've rolled the three. Now there's a potential knockdown. A result on 1d20 is compared to this rating, which is the chin knockdown rating. So let us go ahead and roll that. It is, and we'll say it's a three, just for poops and grins. Ah, uh, dee da dee da. Um, and the fighter is knocked down, first number, or stunned, number in parentheses. A result on 1d20 that compared to this rating, the fighter is knocked down if it's equal to or lower, or stunned if it's equal to or lower, but higher. So if this had been a two, he would have been knocked down. This was a three. He's not knocked down, but it's equal to the parentheses, so he is stunned, which is the same as hurt. Um, the fresh rating is on the left side, and the fatigued rating is on the right side. Uh, chin KO, chin knockout. So another chin check. It's a knockout check. If he is knocked down, this is his ability to get back up. So if you roll that number or lower on the D20, when he's normal, um, he's not fatigued, then it's fight over. It's done. If you roll this or lower when he's fatigued, fight over. He's done. Um, then you have willpower. Uh, the, the ability to avoid a TKO. This is checked if a fighter takes three or more punches while hurt. The fresh rating is on the left side of this section, and the fatigue rating is on the right. So if he takes three or, four, three or more punches when he is hurt in that very next segment, you're going to roll for the TKO, the willpower check. And uh, as long as it is not equal to or lower, which this one would be, that would be a TKO. Uh, as long as it's higher than that number, He's good to go. Um, again, if we roll, let's say on our attack roll of 14, we roll a 19 or a 20. That means there's a cut and swelling chance. You're going to re-roll the d20, and this determines how easily a player is cut or injured. Uh, as long as it's uh, that number or less, then you're going to refer to the cut and swelling chart down here and you're going to re-roll to find out what kind of an injury it is. That's an 8, so in this instance, swelling right eye. Um, so that is the cut. And then foul. Um, if a foul is called, like 95 through 98 on every card, foul. One punch is landed, check the foul chart. Um, you're going to roll to see if a foul was committed and if it is that number or less there's a foul if there's if it's higher than that number like this nine there's no foul um dum be dum let's see fighter to commit a foul yeah mm -hmm. roll one equal to or less it's a foul and then determine which foul it is by looking here at the foul chart and again that's a d20 roll right there Reroll the d20 to find out that Sugar Ray Leonard uh, likes to hold. So that is your fighter ratings. You have your ring generalship. You have your power ratings. Your chin knockdown rating. Your chin knockout rating. Your willpower rating. Cut foul. Also, you're going to see stamina. Stamina is where a player, a boxer's stamina starts for a 10-round match or for a 12 through 15-round match. And then punches landed in a round are subtracted from their stamina until they get to zero, and then the next round they start as fatigued. And then instead of using this column, they'll use this column over here. Uh, let's see. We have gone through the players, and I think we just need to go through the basics of how a round works. So I think we'll do that right now. We'll just cover the rules as we go. So let's pick all these guys up. Let us put the cards somewhere where they can be seen where we really won't need anything there. Let us get this to where we can 
see everything better. And I really want it right about there. So we'll do it kind of like that, I think. That should work well. And a little higher. Because with that stuff up there, you can't really see it that well. Ink. Ink. That'll do. Focus. Your focus need more focus. Okay. So, here we're going to set this up. We have Oscar De La Hoya, he's in the red corner. Sugar Ray Leonard is in the blue corner. So let us go ahead and get our markers out. You're going to keep the red corner pawn right there. You're going to keep the blue corner boxer pawn right there. And this green pawn is going to be used for the timer. So every single segment, you are going to advance it once you, do, once you resolve everything. So the first thing you're going to do... Wow, we can do this. Let's move this over here. We can do it this way. So that way we can see those as well. And let's stick that right there. Okay, now we have a, a die roller. So every single round you're going to start by roll each fighter's 1d6 and compare the star ratings in the ring general section to determine who controls the actions. Well, there we have a red three and a blue six. So we are starting at the three minutes to go segment of this round. Now we have three would be for Oscar De La Hoya, he's inside and no stars. For blue six, Sugar Ray is outside and two stars. So Sugar Ray is going to be taking control of the action in this round. The high star rating has momentum and offensive action. The low has the defensive action. Now what is going to happen is the play, the boxer with offensive action is going to roll the 2d6s, or the 2d10s rather, to determine what's going to happen. He's also going to roll the d20. So that way you know right off whether or not it is a power shot. So we have 42, however we've rolled a 1, and Sugar Ray Leonard, his power rating is 5. That is equal to or less. So there is going to be first an offensive action and then a defensive action. However, it's either going to be a defensive roll or if there is a power shot, it's going to be a chin check. He doesn't get a defensive roll. Or if it's cutter swelling, he's going to do a cutter swelling check. He doesn't get a defensive roll. So there are ranges where the player doesn't get the opportunity to defend and lessen or increase the number of punches landed. So Sugar Ray has rolled on his blue six outside, two stars. He has momentum. I'll explain momentum in just a moment. Uh, from outside, he has rolled a 42. And you'll see 23 to 42, jab, hook, and an uppercut. Three punches landed. So we're going to record three punches landed. Now, if it had been in the middle of the range on the D20, he would be rolling defense, Oscar De La Hoya. And one through four would be subtract one punch landed from the segment. If it was a five, it would be add one punch landed to the segment. Six on up would be no modifier whatsoever. However, it's a one, which is in his power range. So now he's got to make a chin check, and he's got to roll two or if he's got to roll above a two. So we're going to do that right now. And he rolled an eleven. So that means he is not going. He he passed the kisser test. He's not going to be kissing a canvas right now. So that is the end of the first segment. Now we move it to two minutes and 40 seconds left in the round. We roll to see who takes control again. Four and four. Oscar De La Hoya, his four is outside two stars. 
Ray Leonard is inside two stars. They both have two stars, so it's toe-to-toe. -to -toe. In order to determine who goes first, you use momentum. Momentum is either for the very first segment of the whole bout, the red corner, or any time after that, the player who landed the most punches in the segment preceding. So in this instance, Ray Leonard landed the most punches in the last segment. So he is going to go first. They go one at a time. Um, so Sugar Ray Leonard is working the body. So he's going to go ahead and make his attack. That is a 61, and he rolled a 2. So once again, that's within his power rating. So 61 um, from 4 from inside misses. Check opponent's counter. Since he missed, this power roll does not matter. Now it says, check opponent's counter. You're going to look at the counter section right here underneath defense. And it gives you, D, you're going to roll a d20 and it gives you ranges to see if he's going to hook, uh, land two hooks or two crosses. So let's go ahead and roll the d20 to see what De La Hoya's counter is. It's a 14, so that is not going to accomplish anything. So he, Sugar Ray missed, De La Hoya was not able to counter. However, they're toe-to-toe -to -toe because both of them have two stars, so he also gets an offensive action in this round. So he's going to go ahead and roll for that right now. Alrighty, we have a 91. And his red four, it's an outside attack. He shoves off Ray Leonard and he starts coming back at him with uh, haymakers from way downtown. So from outside, 91, clinch. No punches landed in this segment. So we're going to move to the next segment right there. So a little bit of dancing out there. Do a little dance, make a little love, have some boxing tonight. So for the next segment, the 220 segment, we are going to roll to see who gets control. And now we have a red five. So Oscar De La Hoya, outside one star. Sugar Ray Leonard with a blue four, inside two stars. So he is going to be the boxer with the offensive opportunity here. So he is going to go ahead and roll for his attack. And as you can see, he has rolled a He's rolled a 9, so that is above the power rating, and it's not 19 or 20, so there's no cut chance. So as of right now, he's going to get a chance to defend. He rolls a 1-4, four, 14, from inside, which is the 4 for the blue 4. So 14 from outside, dances in and out, firing away, 4 punches landed. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now you make a defense roll. Because if it had been a power shot, he'd have to make a chin check. If it had been cut swelling chance 19 or 20, he'd have to make a cut check. But since he didn't have to do that, he makes a defense roll. Seven. Um, his ranges are one through four and five, so seven is above it. So no defense, no modifiers. It stays at four punches landed. We go to the next round. We roll to see who is in command of the ring. We have a red three, Oscar de la Hoya, inside with no stars. Sugar Ray Leonard, outside with two stars. So Sugar Ray Leonard is in command again. We're going to roll for the offensive attack. Now we have the 14 there. So that is not in the cut range. That's not in his power range. So we're just going to do 35. Blue six from outside, 35. Jab, hook, and an uppercut. Three punches landed. Now, Oscar De La Hoya gets to roll defense. So that's one, two, three punches landed. And we're going to make it a five just for demonstration's sake. One through four, one of those punches landed would have come away. Five, Oscar De La Hoya actually gives a punch landed in this segment. So we're going to move that up to 11. So, so far through a minute and 20 seconds, Sugar Ray Leonard has landed 11 punches. Oscar De La Hoya is pacing himself. Not pissing, pacing. Yeah, no. Next segment, Red 5, Blue 1. Red 5, Oscar De La Hoya, one star outside. Uh, blue 1 for Sugar Ray Leonard. 
two stars inside. So Sugar Ray is going to take it again. He's going to roll the percentile roll and also the D20. So that is going to be a 40. There is a 19. 19 means there is a cut or swelling chance. So instead of defense, he has to roll on the cut and swelling chart. He doesn't get to defend. Um, so 4-0. Um, blue one from inside. 4040. Brisk jabs snap the head back. Two punches landed. So we're going to mark two punches landed. And now we're going to roll a cut check for Oscar De La Hoya. If it's five or less, he's hit. It's a two. He is cut. Now we're going to roll down here to see what happened to him. 18. Bloody nose. Now he is hurt. Anytime a boxer is hurt in the next segment, the unhurt boxer gets an unopposed offensive attack. So first you roll to see from where it will come, inside or outside. Blue two for Sugar Ray Leonard. And two is going to be an outside attack. This is unopposed. You roll. Now there's that little one, and that one means that's a power shot. And he's hurt, so he could use that six or less. It actually is what he would need. Not the five or less, he would need the six or less. However, 87 from outside, 55 through 90, misses check opponent, misses check opponent's counter. And since he is hurt, he does not oppose at all. However, Sugar Ray Leonard missed a wonderful opportunity to really stick it to Oscar De La Hoya. So, we simply move on to the next segment. Let's roll the dice. And so far, Sugar Ray Leonard has been the only one to land any punches. So, he has got momentum. Um, here we have a red four outside two stars. Blue one inside two stars. So that means we have both player, both boxers are going to be taking offensive action against the other. Who goes first? Sugar Ray Leonard has momentum, so he will go first. So he will roll his offensive action. 36. That 16 doesn't mean anything. It's not a 19 or a 20, and it's not within his power range. So 36 um, from the inside, because it's a blue one. 36, jab, hook, and uppercut, three punches landed. One, two, three. Let's roll defense for Oscar de la Hoya. It's a 17, the highest he can do to modify for defense is a five, so there is no defense. It is toe to toe. Each player gets an offensive action in toe to toe. So Oscar de la Hoya gets to roll. Now he has rolled a seven. And his power range, uh, normal and fresh, is a 5. 5 or less. That's a 7, so it's not a knockout. 19 to 20, it is not a cut chance. And with a red 4, he's going from the outside. So 55 from the outside. 46 to 90. Misses. Check opponent's counter. So Sugar Ray gets a chance to roll for a counter attack. And he rolls a 4. Um, two hooks. So he lands two more punches on De La Hoya. We go to the next segment right there. Let's find out, shall we? A red four, a blue five. Oscar De La Hoya, two stars on the outside. Sugar Ray Leonard, one star on the inside. De La Hoya gets the offensive action in this one. He is going to roll these dice. And he is going to roll a 17. It's not within his power range. It's not 19 or 20 for a cut chance. So he rolls a 63. Um, red 4 from the outside. 63, 46 to 90. Misses. Check opponent's counter. So Sugar Ray's counter ranges. He rolls a 15. It's 1 to 4, 2 hooks, 5 to 7, 2 crosses. It's above that at a 15, so no counter is done. We move to the final segment of this round. Uh, three, two. Oscar De La Hoya inside, no stars. Sugar Ray Leonard and that two. Three stars from the outside. He's attacking. 
De La Hoya has not landed a single punch in the first round. Uh, he rolls a 17 on the D20. And that indicates uh, not within the power range, 5 or below, and not a 19 or 20 for a cut chance. So we go straight to the roll, and it's a 0-8. Um, from the outside, 3-22 to 22 for an 8. Dances in and out, firing away. Four punches landed. One, two, three, four. Uh, defense roll for Oscar De La Hoya. Six. Uh, defense one through four and five, so it is not a defense roll. And that is the end of the round. Now, you score how many punches were landed. Um, Sugar Ray... Sugar Ray Leonard landed 22 punches right there. And Oscar De La Hoya didn't land a stinking scrap of leather anywhere on Sugar Ray Leonard's mug or targetable area. So, Sugar Ray Leonard started with 85 stamina for a 10 round bout. So you subtract punches landed from that, and that's his stamina for the following round. So for round two, he's still going to have 85 stamina. Sugar Ray landed 22 punches. Oscar De La Hoya started with 70 stamina. So for round two, his stamina is going to be 48. So the more punches you land, the longer you're going to, the quicker you're going to make your opponent drop to where he is fatigued. Um, and that really pretty much covers most of it. One thing you might do is there is a judge's chart here, and I like using it. And I will roll to see how the judges scored. And I like doing a three-judge thing. And it will give you punch differential. 0, 1 to 4, 5 to 8, 9 to 12, 13 to 19, and 20 plus. And that is, here it is, 10, 9, 4... The player that scored the most punches, 9-10 for the player who scored the least. 10-10, uh, a draw for the round. 10-8, 10-7, knockdown. So we have 22, so 20 plus. So I'm going to roll this three times for three judges. The first judge on a 9 scores this round 10-8. to eight. The second one on a 16 scores it 10-8. to eight. The third judge with a 20 scores it 10-7. to seven. So for 22 punches to none, kind of realistic scoring there, so you know. And then you go through, um, uh, let's see, we need to get to further in the fight, we really do. Let's say Oscar De La Hoya is fatigued. So we're going to use these right here. And let's do one more quick round. We've got time, yeah, we got time for one more quick round. So we'll say Sugar Ray's got the momentum, so we're going to start right there. Uh, let us go ahead and roll for offensive action. Red 2, blue 6. Inside 2 stars, outside 2 stars, toe to toe. Um, Sugar Ray has momentum, he'll go first. He rolls a 4. Um, that is within his power range, so he doesn't get to defend, he gets to make a chin check. 53, um, 6 from outside, 53 just within the range, 43 to 54. Brisk jab, snap the head back, two punches landed. One, two, and he's making a chin check. With his fatigue, normally he would be rolling a two or less. Now he's rolling a three or less to see if he can keep himself from getting knocked down. 20. He miraculously stands on his feet. Um, no defense. He had to make the chin check. So he does that instead of defense. So go to the next segment. Roll the D6s. Red 6, blue 4. Scar De La Hoya inside two stars. Sugar Ray Leonard inside two stars. Toe to toe. Alrighty. We're going against each other here. So Sugar Ray Leonard has momentum. The last one might have been toe to toe. I don't remember. I'm not worried about it, but we know this one is. So Sugar Ray will roll first. Look at the D20. 
It's a five. Ew, it's another power shot. Five or less. He rolls an 07, blue four from inside. Dances in and out, firing away. Four punches landed. One, two, three, four. He's going to have to make a chin check, but he does that after he does his offensive actions. So let's do the offensive actions for Oscar De La Hoya. He rolls a 17. It's not within his power range of five or less, or fatigued, two or less. And it's also not 19 or 20 for cut or swelling chance. So he rolls a 79. And the 79 misses. Check opponent's counter. So rolling for a counter from Sugar Ray. Rolls an 8, just above his cross range of 5 to 7. Now Oscar De La Hoya needs to roll a chin check. Uh, normally, fresh, he'd be 2 or less. Fatigued, he's 3 or less. And that is a 12, so he stays up off the canvas. We go to the next segment, 2 minute and 20 second segment. Let's see who's going to do it. It's double sixes, box Kaz. Um, Oscar De La Hoya inside two stars. Ray Leonard outside two stars. So Sugar Ray is going to go first. He has momentum. Uh, he rolls a 9. It's not in his power range. It's not the, in the cut range. He rolls an 87. Uh, 55 to 90. Misses. Check. Opponent's count. Misses. Check. Opponent's counter. 16. That's above his highest 4 to 5. So no counter punch. Oscar De La Hoya is going to take his offensive action. He rolls a 12. It's not in his power range of 2 or less. It's not 19 or 20. So we're going to look at six. I'm going to do this to show you something. We're going to look at, we're going to make it 20, okay? So he is red six inside 20. Combo lands behind a jab. Three punches landed, okay? So Sugar Ray first gets to roll defense. He rolls a 12, no defense, so those three stay. Sugar Ray has a trait right here. Old Master, minus one from opponent, punches landed on all toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges. This has been a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange because they both had two stars on the sixes. So one of those punches landed did not happen. Only two. That is a trait that Sugar Ray has. We go to the next segment. However, Oscar De La Hoya did land punches in the... 220 segment, so he has momentum right here. Let's go ahead and roll. 1 4. Oscar De La Hoya, red 1, outside 1 star. Sugar Ray Leonard, 4, inside 2 stars. So Sugar Ray Leonard gets offensive action in this segment of the round. So let's roll. That is an 11, so it's not in his power range. It's not in his cut swell chance. So he has rolled a 21. Um, blue 4 from inside. 21, 3 through 22. Dances in and out, firing away. Four punches landed. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oscar De La Hoya gets to roll defense. And that would be a 5. 1 through 4, you take a shot away. 5, you add a shot. Hey. So that is that segment. We go to the next segment, the minute 40 segment. Now let's see who gets the offensive action. 3-4. So for Oscar De La Hoya, 3 is inside, no stars. 4 we know for Sugar Ray is inside, 2 stars. So Sugar Ray gets the offensive action. He rolls a 19. So there is a chance that Oscar De La Hoya is going to have an injury of sorts. So he cannot roll defense. He is going to have to make a cut or swelling check. As long as a punch is landed. Sugar Ray, blue four from inside. 81, 81, 55 to 90, misses. Check opponent's counter. No punch landed. 19, no cut or swelling check. 
He gets to roll for a counter, and he rolls a 20, which is above his 1 through 5 for a counter blow, or 2. So no punches landed. We go to the next segment. Let's roll to see who gets offensive action. 4, 1. Red 4 for Oscar De La Hoya, outside 2 stars. Uh, blue 1, Sugar Ray Leonard, blue corner boxer, inside 2 stars. We have a toe-to-toe -to -toe engagement. And since Sugar Ray was the last one to land punches, he will have momentum, so he will go first in this. So uh, Sugar Ray Leonard is working the body. Uh, he rolls a one, so there is a knockdown chance. So Scar De La Hoya is going to have to make a chin check. Uh, as long as it punches are landed. Um, blue one is inside. 58. 53.82 misses check opponent's counter. So no chin check. No contact was made. Oscar De La Hoya rolls a three. He connects on two hooks. And now since it's toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Oscar De La Hoya gets his opportunity to roll an offensive action. He rolls a 20. He may have cut Sugar Ray. He may have cut Sugar Ray as long as a punch is landed. 85, red 4 from outside, 85, 46 to 90, misses, check opponent's counter, no cut, roll Sugar Ray for a counter attack, that is cocked, 8, his highest counter was 5 through 7, so he doesn't land any punches in a counter attack, um, doink, doink, we go right there. Scar De La Hoya did land punches in his counterattack, so he has momentum now for the one-minute segment of this round. Let's see who gets offensive action. 6-4. Uh, Scar De La Hoya, two stars inside. Sugar Ray Leonard, blue four, two stars inside. It is toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, Scar De La Hoya has momentum, so he is going to go first. Let's roll his action. He rolls an 11 Nothing doing. 98. Red 6 from inside. 95 to 98 on every boxer's card. Foul. One punch lands. However, in toe-to-toe, -to -toe, minus one punch lands in all toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges. So there's not even a punch. However, we're going to roll to see if there's a foul. It's got to be three or less. By the way, this is fresh. This is fatigued. Uh, your cut and foul are the same regardless. So it's not like uh, stamina means something. This is separate in and of itself, the stamina rating here. Um, so the cut and the foul are going to be these numbers regardless. So let's see if his foul is three or less. It is a 15. He does not have to roll to see if he is charged with a foul by the referee. Um, so he had momentum. He went first. So now Sugar Ray Leonard gets an offensive action in this toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. He rolls, ooh, 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 a 17, which is not in his power range. It's not 19 and 20. However, he rolled a 1. Uh, blue 4 inside. Masterful boxing from distance. Five punches landed. One, two, three, four, five. We're doing it again. And Oscar De La Hoya gets to roll uh, his defense. He rolls a 20. His highest defense range, well, it's one through five for the two possibilities. So, no defense. We go to the next segment. 40 seconds to go here in this round. Let's see who gets the offensive action. Red one, blue six. Red one for Oscar De La Hoya, outside one star. Uh, blue six for Sugar Ray Leonard, outside two stars. So, Sugar Ray is going to be having the offensive action in this segment. Uh, he has rolled a 16 on the old D20, which is not in his power range, and it's not 19 to 20. So you are going to proceed down to here and find out what happened. 76, blue 6 from outside. 76, 55 through 90. Misses. Check opponent's counter. So Oscar De La Hoya gets a chance at a counter, rolls a 9. That's above his 1 through 5 for his two possibilities, so no counter on that one. 20 seconds, the final segment of this round. 
Let's see what happens. Two, five. Um, Oscar De La Hoya, red two. Inside two stars. Ray Leonard, uh, inside one star. So Oscar De La Hoya is going to have the offensive action here. Let's see if he can actually make something happen. Um, he rolls a cocked die. Not touching it because... Wow, this sucker's standing there, see? So we're going to foul ball, foul ball, roll them all. That is a six. Now he is fatigued, so his power rating is two or less, 19 to 20. So we're going to roll, and Sugar Ray is going to get defense. 18. Red two is inside. Inside, 18. Hard cross, caps the sequence. Oh, hold on a second. I need to plug in my computer. The battery got low and the screen went blank and I was like, wait a minute, it's not supposed to do that. Alright, there we go. Let me... It closed automatically. So 18, red 2, inside, hard cross, caps the sequence. Four punches landed. One, two, three, four. Sugar Ray gets to roll defense. One through four, you take one of those punches away. Five, you take two of those punches away. Five, two of those punches come back. And that is the end of the round. So Sugar Ray landed 16 punches. So you would take 16 away from Oscar De La Hoya's current stamina. De La Hoya scored, landed 6 punches. You would take 6 away from Sugar Ray Leonard's stamina. And then roll to see how they judge. A differential of 10. So that's going to be this row right here. 1 through 19 is just a straight up 10-9. 10-9, 10-9. 10-9. Everybody's uh, unanimous on that. That is how you play this game. Um, if you have any questions at all, uh, please feel free to comment down below. Um, check out the game at sidelinesportsgames.com. Uh, they're the makers of Payoff Pitch, um, all kinds of other games. A fantastic company I've got a lot of experience with. So definitely check that website out right there above the Glory Days box and in the middle of the screen, sidelinesportsgames.com. Uh, check out uh, Anthony's YouTube channel at Bleacher Bums Gaming. Um, definitely got some good content, content up on his channel. And uh, this has been Chris with Tabletop Sports Delaware. Again, any questions, any comments or anything, put them down in the uh, doobly-doo down there. And um, you guys know I, I respond to pretty much every comment I get. So I don't get an awful lot of them. I digress. This has been Chris with Tabletop Sports Delaware. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Anthony, thank you very much for this fantastic game. A lot of thought and a lot of work and a lot of craftsmanship has gone into it. Fantastic design. I think it is beautiful and I really do appreciate it a lot. And this was made possible by our uh, raffle over there to help somebody with a uh, monetary assistance that has been affected by the uh, circumstances surrounding COVID-19 over on Rob's channel. Um, so definitely give him a uh, hey hey and what's up. All this was made possible by his generosity and his mustering the YouTube community forces. And I was able to benefit from this fantastic game and I wanted to share it with you. It's easy to learn, it's easy to play, it's pleasing to the eyes, and it's well worth it, guys. Check it out. Chris, Tabletop Sports Delaware. Spiel concluded. Keep on rolling, guys.